Hi, this is Simon with Next RC. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change the helicopter setups in Next uh, to get them to your own personal preferences. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go and select the helicopter that you wish to use. In this case, I'm going to be using the T Rex 600E Pro DFC. And what you want to be doing is you want to be selecting one of the tabs on the flight condition at the top. And what you can do is you can rename it to your name. In this case, what I've done is rename it to test. Secondly, what you want to be doing is it's best to start off from a clean model. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to preset. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the head speed to my desired head speed or your desired head speed in this case. And I like to run around 2100. You can either move the slider or you can highlight that number there and change it using your keyboard. In this case, I like to use around 2100. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a little fly about and we're just going to have a feel for what the helicopter flies like and is it to my liking. I can tell you straight away that the helicopter cyclic rates are a little bit low for me. Okay, so what the, the ways of checking this are you can either do circuits or you can move the helicopter side to side, backwards and forwards. And if you feel like it's not reactive or it's not flipping or rolling quick enough for you, what you can do is you can go into the settings and increase your dual rates for your elevator and aileron. This also works for the rudder, so we'll check the pyro rate in both directions again it's a little bit low for me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase both the rates on the elevator and aileron and the rudder the elevator and ailerons rates are paired obviously so what I'm going to do is increase that up to say 56 and then I'm going to give it a try and at the same time I'm going to increase the rudder rates to about 54 so first we would check the rudder okay. could do it a little bit quicker on that one just check the the flip rates and again we can, I could do with a little tiny bit more on that so I'm just going to increase that by a couple of points increase that by one and again we're going to give it a little try and that for me is nice okay next thing what we're going to do is we're going to have again another little fly about and what I'm doing here is I'm just judging on how the, the tail feels. If the tail is too reactive, what you can do is you can increase the the rudder expo. And it will make it less reactive around centre stick to make your circuits a lot smoother. And in this instance it feels decent. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into a little hover and I'm just going to get a sense for how sensitive it is around mid stick in the hover. Uh, if the expo is too high, then you'll you'll feel like you have to move the sticks a lot to get the helicopter to move. If it is too low, then you'll feel like the helicopter is very twitchy. Uh, in this case, it's pretty much spot on. Uh, one thing to note before you do any of these tuning options is um, you can do this at any stage, but you you need to make sure that your when you go if you go into the simulator tab at the top, calibrate input device is to make sure that your dead zone is as low as it can possibly go without any drift in the helicopter uh, in my case it was one if i put it down to zero then the helicopter will drift you'll find the, the lower this number the, the more connected you'll feel with the helicopter more connected with the controls etc if it's too high you'll have to move the sticks quite a lot just to get the helicopter to move in any direction um, so make sure that you've set this and that you're, you're dead band is as low as it can possibly go without it actually drifting. Okay, if we go back into the helicopter setup, and again, if you just check that your expo on your aileron and your rudder are to your liking, again, everybody has personal preferences, so spend some time and tune these settings to your liking. It'll, it will actually make a big difference to your flying, and it'll make, make you a lot more comfortable when it comes to learning new maneuvers and new moves. Next thing I'm going to move on to is the pitch of the helicopter. Okay, so I'm going to go again, fly it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight up and straight down. Okay, and what I'm going to, what I'm judging here is how quickly does it climb and how quickly does it descend. 
right in this instance it's 10 degrees of pitch with 2100 head speed and although it might appear as if it's climbing quite high it's not quite high enough for me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change that up to 12 and then i'm going to give it another try and that climbs a lot quicker and descends a lot quicker okay so for me 12 seems about perfect but again tune this to your own personal preference next thing on the pitch is the pitch response and what this will do is if you re again if you ho if you hover over the the names it will give you a, a description in the tooltips below in that little box here so pitch response the pitch response around the neutral point is adjustable using higher values for more direct responses okay so if you feel like the pitch is too reactive around center stick what you can do is you can decrease this if you feel like you need to increase the pitch response around mid stick what you can do is increase this in my case i'm just going to give it a little try and i like to check this by just doing tiktoks um, you can do this by just jimmy it up and down uh, it's a little bit slow for my liking so i'm just going to increase that by one and give it a try and for me that feels nice next thing we're going to look at is the pitch break dynamics what this will do is if again if you read the tooltips at the bottom the higher the dynamics the sharper the react reacts to pitch while the load changes so what that basically means is if you're doing for instance rainbows and you feel like when you stop in the helicopter it's not actually stopping as quick as you'd like or as quick as that you're used to on your real helicopter what you can do is again go into the settings and increase and decrease this as necessary if you feel like the helicopter stops under changes of direction from using the pitch too quickly you can lower this number if you feel like you need to increase this reaction of how quick it stops what you can do is increase it what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase it by a couple of points because it's a little bit slow for my liking I'm going to just increase that by 1.8 and again we're just going to try it and that feels nice Okay, so bring it into land and what we're going to do next is we're going to have a look at pitch hardness. What pitch hardness is, the higher this value or the lower this value, the more direct the pitch is going to feel. Um, it is very similar to pitch response. But if you can tune these two together, you can get pretty much a perfect feeling helicopter. Um, again, this is a process that's going to take you some time to tune. Um, if you use both of them, you don't have to use this pitch, pitch hardness. But I find that if you tune both of these together, if you do the, the pitch response and the pitch break dynamics first, and then any fine tuning that you want to do to the pitch, you can use this set here. So I'm, I'm just going to lower it by... 10 points or so and just give it a try so for me that what that's done is it's it's made the pitch a lot less responsive uh, this this setting is very similar in respects to pitch boost which is available on quite a lot of fly baller systems uh, v bar and beast x being a couple so what I'm going to do is increase that to 77. I'm going to give it a little try. And again, again, this is personal preference. This is this is not really a setup that I, uh, setting that I would start messing around with if if you were new to the hobby, um, or you weren't really into 3D yet. If you're just doing circuits, etc., this is not really a setting that you don't really uh, need to use. So I'll I'm happy with how that feels, and I'll leave that there at 77. Uh, what we'll move on to next is auto rotation settings. As default models, they don't actually auto rotate that well. Um, the settings are going to be changed very shortly um, by Klaus, the owner. Um, I'll give you a quick demonstration of what the, the auto rotations are like. I feel like the blades head, sp head speed off way too quickly. Uh, and the flaring isn't actually as, as good as it can be. 
it, there is some hang time but I feel like the helicopters do have a, a lot more hang time in reality and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase this num these numbers here uh, you don't want to be increasing these numbers dramatically because uh, it will make a huge difference so I'm going to change this number from 0 0.0120 to say 0 0.150 another thing to note is the flare and what this is going to do is when you bring the angle of when you bring the angle up of the helicopter as you're bringing it in for an auto rotation if you've got negative pitching and you're in if you're upright and bringing it in i'll show you you just go up if you just bring it in and the angle that you come in if you just bring it in nose in like that with zero degrees pitch it's not going to gain any head speed so what you need to do is you need to lift the rotor disc up slightly as you can see the difference of me adding the pitch has made a bit of a difference uh, sorry adding the the, head, the keep head speed has made quite a bit of a difference if you feel like when you flare the helicopter and bring it into land that it's not actually generating enough head speed what it should be doing in that instance is it should be actually gaining head speed providing you have negative pitch and that you are coming down at the correct angle you can change this number to again your own personal preference but again as i said these these auto rotation simulations are going to be changed shortly um they are currently being still currently being developed so i'm going to change that to 0 0.0019 and give it a try just put that pop that off we'll take it up we'll give it a try and we'll take turn the engine off in this case we'll just do an inverted auto in this case you're going to need a little bit positive pitch and again the angle keep it right and that is pretty much realistic to me it, it, it feels very nice again you can change these settings to how your own individual helicopter reacts the 600s don't auto rotate, rotate quite as well as the 700s the bigger the helicopter the usually the better the auto rotate next day, we'll move on to helicopter engine strength and engine uh, helicopter weight i find as default that the helicopter weights are a little bit too light um, and in this in instance again i feel it is the same it's a little bit too light so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another a little bit weight so 4.4 .4 instead of 4 kilos and what i'm going to do is the engine strengths tend to be very high uh, in this instance this is a 600 a, a dfc pro um and yes i'm sure if you have a really good powerful helicopter setup that you could just sit and do tiktoks all day with it but you will find that with a lot of helicopters when you do demand the moves like this for, for any prolonged period of time that eventually the head speed is going to bleed off and it's going to be going to bog as it's known in this instance i feel like it is but uh, not bogging at all and the head speed's just been maintained at a constant 2100 rpm there's two ways of, of, of changing the engine strength you can either change the overall engine strength in entirety but what i like to do is i like to increase the 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 consumption which is these two here it's the consumption by the maximum pitch and consumption by maximum cycling so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to increase them slightly and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to send it up vertically and bring it back down and it's like electric helicopters have a lot of torque and a lot of power but towards the end of the battery power they're going to have a lot less and in this instance that's about about right for me the head speed is you can i can feel the head speed is dropping slightly like it should be as well just give it a land just, just get it a bit carried away another thing to note is the cooldown and what this is is the smaller that the number this number is the faster that the the engine's going to cool down this is more specific to nitro helicopters i know there's only one nitro in the simulator at the moment um but this also comes into effect for electric motors 
if you do constant TikToks with the, an electric helicopter, the motor is going to get hot, hot. And as the motor gets hot, it starts losing efficiency. So we'll go from one extreme to the other. We'll go to zero, and what this will do is it'll basically there'll be no heat generated by the motor at all, and it shouldn't. There should be no decrease in performance as you as you're flying. But if you if you've got an electric helicopter and you do do a lot of tick, uh, TikToks with it, etc., you'll find that if you keep doing them, the, the motor will get hotter and hotter, and the efficiency will go down and down. What I'm going to do is I'm increase this to 20. And if you see, as I'm now doing it, it's losing efficiency and the head speed is coming down because the efficiency of the motor is going down and the power from the motor is going down because of that. And now I'm really working to keep it in the air. And then when you stop, what that does, what that number's for is it's how quickly it recuperates. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the bog. And then we're going to stop and then the head speed goes back up. Okay, so again, tune this to your own personal preference. You don't really need to change it if you don't want to, but it is if you want the helicopter to be, to be as realistic as possible, then you need to change these numbers to your own personal preference. Okay. Other settings that you can mess with to get more of a better feel are your rudder and uh, elevator and aileron gains. If you feel like the helicopter is not quite as locked in as you would like, um, this these settings are very similar to increasing and decreasing your gain on your fly baller system. They don't quite work in the same way. Uh, if you find that with the rail one, with the rail fly baller system, if you increase the say the gain on the rudder to 100%, go out and fly, your tail is just going to wag really, really, really quickly. Um, there is a specific has to, like there is a specific set of numbers where it's going to feel a lot better okay so 100 percent does make the tail more react it does make it feel a lot more locked in and it will stop a lot quicker but i always find that the default numbers are pretty spot on so again this is personal preference these are more for more for advanced users other than other things that you can look at is the head dampener Again, if you look at the tooltip, it'll tell you a higher val a value results in a softer cyclic control behavior. Lower value gives you more direct control. And modern fly bar system tend to have lower dampening. Back in the days of fly bar, uh, fly bar, the dampers on your rotor head were a lot softer than today than today's fly bar systems. Uh, for instance, DFC dampers are a lot stiffer and harder than say the 3G style heads or the Align FL versions. Again, this is personal preference. Um, what you want to be doing is lowering it will give you a more of a, a more of a harder, some more harder dampers. Um, increasing it will make make the dampening in a lot more. Again, this is personal preference. And if you just have a little mess around like this, I, it actually feels quite spongy uh, if you feel like the helicopter is too spongy again lower it decrease depending on what your personal preferences are okay uh, if there's anything that you would like to know please leave a comment in the description below or in the comments below um, I'll do my best to give you a good description of what these individual settings do what I'll also do is add, add in the description what all of the individual settings actually do. Uh, if you catch me online, I'll quite happily make you a setup for you. Um, but again, it's something that you should really be tuning, tuning for yourself. Uh, I find that if you take half an hour, 40 minutes, and really tune like all of the settings to your own personal preference, uh, you will your flying will benefit from it. One thing to note is if you do actually own the rail helicopter, so if you do actually own an Align 600 Pro DFC, is tune the, tune the simulator to fly as close to your, your rail helicopter as possible. Uh, ways you can do this is you can record yourself flying the real thing. Um, 
and use the video as a reference point. Uh, for instance, you know, you could fly your real helicopter and just, you know, put it in the hover and then send it vertical, bring it back down. Uh, if that's not something you're comfortable doing, again, I don't want you to crash your helicopters in trying to do this, but try and get tune the settings to get the heli to the helicopter fly as real as you possibly can. Uh, if you use a video, what you can do is you can send it up vertically and then you can change the pitch to that. What you can do is you can do flips and rolls and and etc. All loads of different things that you can do. Then you can use the video footage to, to tune your own helicopter uh, on here to be as realistic as possible. Uh, as ultimately that is the goal, as this is a simulator you want it to react as best you can to your own actual helicopter. Anyway, I hope this video has helped some of you out. Thanks for watching. Bye.